In this video, I want us to go through uh, what I'm referring to, the tracking signals. This is the information uh, in Chapter 5 dealing with time series analysis. Time series analysis uh, is really a, a, a method that we could use to, to forecast whatever we're forecasting using the predictor variable or independent variable of time. So when you when you read or hear time series the independent variable is always a dimension of time weekly monthly quarterly or yearly data uh, as such in this video I want to specifically focus in on this tracking signal you will have a specific assignment uh, this week uh, whereby you will uh, have to come up with the best uh, forecasting uh, model, the best forecasting method, and you will do that uh, by selecting the model that has the mean squared error in a particular assignment that will be due this coming Friday. Saying that, just because you've come up with the best model as such, it doesn't mean that you really have anything. You'd want to go back in time and back testing the model to see if you really have anything that, okay, yeah, this is good at forecasting whatever I'm trying to forecast. And we do that in back testing whatever the model may be is through these tracking signals. If the tracking signals fall within plus uh, minus three uh, standard deviates as such, we would conclude the model is good. So from our standpoint, I'm just going to do a, uh, an example, an illustration uh, to insist you uh, in coming up with, oh yeah, this is how I would uh, arrive at these tracking signals and this is how I would identify, this is how I would say that the model happens to be good. Uh, so, as you can see, we're in Excel QM, and all that you uh, were going to do is come up here and just double click Excel, and you can see we can do it by chapter, we can do it alphabetical. And I'm just clicking on alphabetical, and I'm coming down to forecasting. And you can see we have various options. Moving average, weighted moving average, exponential smoothing, trend, uh, regression, multiple regression, etc. I'm just going to say, let's just look at the regression trend analysis. And I'm going to double click that on. And I'm just going to give it a title. We'll say tracking and the sheet uh, name. I'll just say uh, signals and options very very important click on tracking signal you don't have to click on graph but the tracking signal is very very important number of past data points uh, brief example let's just use five uh, the name for the period we're going to use uh, year and that looks at it so we'll just say okay and you can see we have our drop down menu here forecasting simple linear regression we have demand we have period okay now instead of using years uh, I'm just gonna go ahead and I'm just gonna use one two three four and uh, five and over here for my demand uh, I'm gonna use um, I'm going to say, okay, my demand, my Y, is, we'll say, the Dow Jones Industrial Average. I'm trying to forecast what the Dow Jones Industrial Average may be for year uh, six as such. So let's just say here uh, we'll use 10,000. And here I'm going to use 12,000. Uh, we'll use 12,500, uh, 13,250, and let's just jump it to, say, 14,500. Okay, so I've, my data has uh, been inputted. Uh, I'm coming over here, and let me just say this. Um, in that assignment that's going to be due for Friday, 
question always comes up, okay, I got to come up with the best forecasting model. How do I do that? How do I determine which one to select? You will select the best forecasting model by focusing in on the mean squared error. To identify or to quantify the mean squared error, look up to the next cell. Like in this case, the mean squared error is what is that? Uh, 108,750. The reason I'm focusing in on the mean squared error is so that everybody will be doing the same thing. Uh, do not take mean squared error and come down to the next cell. Always go to the cell above the mean squared error. The 425 here is the standard error, but we're focusing in on mean squared error just to make sure that everybody's doing the same thing. Okay, now. As I said, the emphasis was on the tracking signal. The tracking signal. We are assuming that the model, okay, um, as our previous work in Chapter 4, I have an intercept and I have the slope. So I could be saying this. In other words, my uh, linear expression, my linear equation would be, oh, guess what? the Dow Jones Industrial Average is equal to my intercept 9375 plus my slope of 1025 times my year. So if I was forecasting for year 6, uh, it would be my intercept 9375 plus my slope of 1025 times my predictor variable and that would be 6. And that would be my forecast. So if I'm forecasting for year six, oh, it would be 15,525. And let's assume that, in other words, I'm saying, okay, that, I really like this model because of all the other models, this model has the least amount of mean squared error. That's my equation. Now, I have to go back and back test it to see if it's really is good at saying what it's supposed to be doing. So that's where this tracking signal comes into play. Uh, and all what I indicated to you, what I want us to do is just to kind of show how it is set up utilizing Excel QM. The bottom line is that if the tracking signal is within plus or minus three standard deviates, it is good. And you can see here by this particular column, it is 1, 1 1.89, 1.28, 1.6. So this regression expression, which forecasts for year six of 15,525, is a good model based on back testing it, and it all falls within plus or minus three standard deviates. So uh, again, that's a quick and dirty. You will also have a bonus opportunity this coming week dealing with tracking signals. Uh, but I just wanted to make sure that, in other words, I brought this to your attention in this uh, short video uh, on how to use Excel QM to identify tracking signals and then at the same time to illustrate that it falls within plus or minus three. Okay, the model that you selected is good. If it does not fall within plus or minus three, the model is called into question.